And we are back with another one. We are here another lovely Friday for y'all. We are incredibly grateful that y'all are here to tune in to us another week here. I got the great Brian Broaddus, 105.3, the fan G-Bag Nation, 2 to 7, the draft show and love the start podcast with Bobby Bell. I'm getting better at this, Brian. I, I, I was I was bad at this. I was like, oh, he does this, he does this, but we got it good now. How you doing, sir, Brian? I'm doing well. Thanks, Fosh. Appreciate uh, being with you another week mm -hmm. uh, as we're... Uh, as we're making our way down to the end of this thing, as far as the drafting process goes, you're starting to hear information about the players, maybe some hints about maybe where this board might go. Mm -hmm. um, guys visiting, medicals, all that. Just a lot of things to kind of digest here uh, as uh, we get going here. I think in, uh, what, two weeks, yeah. when you and I do a Friday show, we're going to be talking about a first-round pick, potentially, <sighs> if they didn't trade out of this thing. So yeah. it'll be here before you know it. I actually, uh, I actually didn't listen to your advice because I like to listen to you and take your advice and all. And you was like, "Man, I just stopped watching wide receivers." Yeah, I, I watched two more. <laughs> I watched two more, <laughs> and they good. They good. I looked Man. at uh, Aina Smith from um, Texas A&M. And yeah, and then I looked at Malik Washington from Virginia. Yeah, Malik Washington might be picked in the fourth round. Uh, he's got he he's a transfer. Uh, and really super productive at Virginia, and they were a bad football team. Mm -hmm. And if you watch him play, he the routes are very good. The hands are very good. Uh, a lot of things to like about both those players. But to your point, yeah, I, I got to where – I, I usually try and get 200 players, mm -hmm. and it ended up being 215 players. And now I'm trying to stack them uh, from 1 to 215 to how I would take them. And uh, that's taken some time for me to go through and make sure I go back and read notes. Much like the exercise you and I did about the wide receivers, mm -hmm. where you go back and you say, okay, wait a minute, I, I got this guy sounding a little bit better than this guy. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of these guys we've done – pretty early in the campaign. So, you know, you have to go back and like, okay, I remember this guy. I remembered why I like this guy. And like, okay, I remember why I ding this guy. And besides that too, we have some more information about these guys, whether it's things we've heard about with interviews, medical, uh, workouts, a lot of things factor into this uh, as we put this board together. That's the one thing that I do differently from you and all the rest of the guys. Look, draft show is, is fantastic. I just keep giving y'all praise, keep giving you credit. The more that we change guys out, there's a new crop of draft show people, and it just keeps right. that same yeah. level of fantasticness. But the one thing that I don't do that you guys do is actually make a board. I don't, right. I don't, you know, I don't make a board. I don't put all the players in the like. There's no top 200 for me. Uh, I right. just, I just kind of leave it up here. And if you ask me, hey, this guy, this guy, I can just mentally just pull it up this and this so what goes into making a board not as a scout scout right but as a media radio dude right like what goes into making a board for you yeah Vash, we um if you were on the draft show with us those three days covering the draft i guarantee you would make a board mm -hmm. and i'll tell you why because what happens is you know, not only are we working for Dallas Cowboys fans, we're working for other fans too that might be tuning in. Maybe, you know, maybe they're Buccaneer fans, maybe they're Rams fans. They want to hear about their players. So we try to, and it's always been something with us is that, and I've made sure of this over the years, that we talk about all these guys. If we know something about them, hey, make a comment. This kid got drafted. Let's talk about him. You know, how's he a fit? Uh, you know, oh, we really liked him. Man, I, this is going to be a risky pick. But you get to a point in time where the draft is proceeding and then it turns into Dallas's 10 picks away. Who do you got on your board? And you've got to be able to quickly go and say, I've got these three guys available. This is how I've got it, right? And it's just a really convenient way of keeping track. Like I will highlight the players as they're selected and – it's just kind of what I used to do when I was working in the, um, you know, working in those war rooms. Mm -hmm. You just keep track of the players that are going off the board, but then it also gives you a point of reference for when it is, say, the Cowboys pick, and we start to focus in on, okay, they're ten picks away, they're seven picks away, they're five picks away. It just that that's what it is, and that's the process. Um, I do it as an organizational way 
and it's something that I've always done, uh, you know, when I was when I was working in war rooms. So I just I've carried that over uh, to to my media side of things. So when you're making this board, because it's interesting, right? Because I heard something that was interesting, right? When you're making this board, is it only about the talent of the player? Because I was listening to uh, Dane. He was on a yeah. podcast with uh, Nate Tice or something like that. And he was saying, oh, um, what's his name? Got in trouble here. So I bumped him yeah. down a couple of spots. Or this character. Right. Sweat. You're sweat. hearing about Sweat. I'm yeah. hearing about Sweat. Sure. Texas. Texas. Yeah. 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 Or this player got injured. So that's going to move him around the board. If I was yeah. to make a board, it'll only be based on the talent of the player. Right. So do you consider injuries and do you consider troubling off the field stuff as a, as a part of your board building? Yeah, there's uh I would say 90% of my board is just film evaluation or however I take in that player. There are times where you will hear information from your scout buddies. Um, I, I send my board to one of my dear friends in the league and he looks at my board and says, you're too high, you're too low. And then I make a determination. Okay. Why is he telling me this? I, I don't sit there and fluctuate my board by what people tell me, but if you do get uh, bad medical information, sure, you want to give the player his due and put him where you would take him. Jalen Smith would be a great example of that. Yeah, uh, you know when he came out in the draft from Notre Dame, and you know you give him his due where he should be, and then you let the medical part take care of itself. But the thing I don't want to do is put a guy on the board in a very high spot and keep talking about him, talking about him, talking about him. And then teams have, have uh, flagged him because of medical or they flagged him because of character. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if a guy, if, if someone's telling me, for example, we, when we mentioned sweat, mm -hmm. you know, people are telling me sweat second round talent, but a lot of teams have him off the board. Mm -hmm. A lot of teams have him in the fourth round. That that in itself is okay when we're when it's Dallas's pick, say, or anybody else's pick. You're like, well, who do you got? You know, Zach Wolchuk will go. Well, Brian, who do you got left on your board? Well, I got Sweat from Texas, and then you start to wonder why. Why is he not being picked? Why? So if you if you could kind of get ahead of the game a little bit, it makes it easier on your board. If a guy slides and you have him, or say you have him in the fourth round, he gets taken in the second. Then you could say, well, man, they had him a lot higher than I did. And but this is the stuff that I was hearing about the medical, the character, the interviews, things like that. If I could get a little more insight than I already get, I'll take advantage of it. But I'd say 90 percent of my board is all film related. Well, then maybe next year I'll just keep up with the Joneses and, or the trains oh, or, the, or the Broadduses. I don't, you know what, Brian? We'll, I get don't... You, we'll get you on the draft show. That's what we'll do because, like I say, my, sure. my roster uh, over there is uh, – the one thing that's been consistent is me. Everybody yeah. else seems to kind of <laughs> – everybody yeah. else kind of moves along. And uh, But I'm proud. Uh, I'm proud of the, the way that, that – you know, you mentioned Dane Brugler. I mean, Dane Brugler was one of the original draft show members, uh, uh, proud of – uh, at the time with Kevin Turner and Jeff mm -hmm. Cavanaugh and, and, you know, David Hellman. Yeah. I mean, there's some guys. And now with Aisha coming on board, I think Aisha Morrison has done a hell of a job. I really, really do. Mm -hmm. I, I'm so proud of her for, it, it was tough on her last year. You know, I mean, fans could be super critical. This is the one show you can't hide. Yeah. You can't, you can't hide because, you know, people are going to question like, well, do you really know these players or not? And I think Aisha has developed a really uh, a good eye as, you know, with Zach and it's been good to work with Nick. So a, mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of really good positivity about the draft show. Shouts out to Brian Bravis. He's the old, he's the old um college coach. You know, he's here. I'm, but, the, I'm the, the yeah, <laughs> I'm the guy. I'm gum on your shoe. You yeah. can't get rid of me. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we were just we were just talking about big boys and all that. So yeah, uh, based on what you were saying, so Peyton Wilson should be down big boys. Jackson Powers Johnson is a guy that should be down big boys. Yeah. But I'm 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 hard headed, Brian. You know what I mean? So yeah, if, I know I'm with you. I'm yeah. with you on that. I'm not moving off of my Peyton Wilson. You know, like like okay, he. He's hurt guy, but he's been healthy for, for two years. That's what I'm going to say to you. Okay, well, right. Jackson's hurt guy. Okay, well, he, he looked fine here. And, and you know, maybe it's it's going to take them to actually fall in this 
you know, in this um, draft for me to really like, uh, you know, for me to really like take that example from. But let me ask you this, though, Brian. I thought about something. In the event that Jackson Powers Johnson, Zach Frazier, any of your favorite centers, right? And I do mean favorite centers, those top three or so guys, right? Graham probably won't fall. What's it going to take for you to double down on offensive line? I just had this idea one day. I was minding saw my business. I your tweet about that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. In my mind, Tyron Smith has been your left tackle for 30 years. Zach Martin has been your right guard for 40 years. Unforeseen circumstances got Trav out of here. But if you hit on your offensive lineman, they'll be here for a long, long time. So in my mind, we could go for a lot of different things. But if you take care of your offensive line, you'll never have to worry about it again. Buy once, cry once is what they say, okay? What if there's a situation where you can acquire, let's just say Mims at 24, and you just look at your boy, right? Mm-hmm. Dang, boy, they really worry about that Jackson Powers Johnson thing. Mm-hmm. Boy, Zach Frazier kind of falling. Maybe his injury during the season. Maybe they got some questions about that. What if you got one of those dudes on the board at 56? Not Van Pran. I like Van Pran, but not him. Not Mason McCormick. Not those guys. Not, you know, the kid from Wisconsin. What if one of those guys are at 56 for, or 54, 50, second round 56, pick? 56. Yeah. 56. For, what if those guys are at 56 for you? Do you double down on your offensive line? Because that dude is there. Okay, this is a this is a really a great question because what happens is now you're going to have to start to compare others on that board, and this is where your stack comes in. Mm-hmm. This is where how high do you have Frazier on your board? Uh, there is he is he anywhere near say say somehow Cooper gets to the linebacker from Texas A and M. Say you're looking at Brooks, the running back from Texas, yeah. Benson from Florida State, depending on if you have them that high. What wide receiver is on that board? What corner is on that board? The the exercise you have to go through, and this is all pre-draft to get to your stack, is you know you want to make sure, like I said, I always tell you guys, never window dress your board. You know, put the guys where you think you'll take them. Whether you know, don't listen to people tell you that that guy's not a second round player. If you think he's a second round player, and people are like, oh, no, Vach, he's a fourth round player. You got him wrong and all that. No, I I you know, hey. You'll be right more than you are wrong a lot of these times. So it's going to come down to how the stack is and how close. Because you're going to have some similar grades. Like I say, Frazier from West Virginia, the center. Cooper, the linebacker from Texas. And maybe even Wilson, the linebacker from North Carolina State. Yeah, They're going to have similar grades. And what's going to happen is you're going to say, our stack tells us we got it graded Wilson, Frazier, Cooper or Cooper, you know, whatever order you have it in. And and that's really the order you should go. But if if it gets down to it, see, when they drafted CD Lamb, their stack told them, you know, we we could take this edge rusher from LSU and and you know and chase on. We could take Chase on and you know, but wait a minute, we got a tag that we we got the sixth best player on our board sitting there with CD Lamb. That to me, that to me is where it it turns into you're you're better off going and getting that guy mm-hmm. that you got rated higher. You you could take a need, but don't jump tags and things like that. I, I think there's a I think there's a legitimate discussion. And I when you're putting together your board, you have to be able to have that discussion pre-draft. Okay, what if Frazier falls? What are we gonna do? You know, what if one of these guys that we didn't expect, What are, are we prepared to, and as a room, you have to be able to say, yes, yes, we're going to take Mims and we're going to take Frazier if he's there. And I, I don't think that's a wrong, I don't think that's wrong, but that's all pre-draft. I, I don't know if that's a discussion that you have mm-hmm. on the clock. Yeah. You You walk that scenario through before you get there because you don't want the Cowboys in the past have had some confusion. If you remember Sharif Floyd, when Tom, uh, the, the defensive tackle from Florida yeah. and they had, it was a fifth overall pick on or a fifth player on their board. And it got down to their spot. And Tom Saskowski is arguing, wait a minute, we got the fifth player on this board. And then the room didn't go with him. Mm-hmm. Well, what happened the next year? Tom Saskowski was no longer running the draft. So these are discussions that you have to have, but you, to your point, there's nothing wrong 
with double dipping on positions, especially one like that offensive line, and especially with the quality there are uh, at the tackle and then at the center. So let me ask you, Zach Frazier, second round, you just yeah. you, you just went Mims in the first. Zach yeah. Frazier or Brandon Dorless? I'm taking Frazier. Zach, I got see, and, and, and to me, it, it, when I do my stack, mm -hmm. I'll have Frazier. I'll have Frazier above Dorless. I have you know, and and but I see what you're doing here. Sure. The thing about it was okay. If it was, it would be a little closer to me if it was Sweat, Sweat, or or Fisk from Florida State. Okay. If you were telling me that I could grab. And I know this is going to be hard for a lot of fans out there, especially Cowboy fans, because you took a one technique last year and it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. Are you going to sit? But we're in the second round now. Yeah. Are you going to pass on Sweat? Are you going to pass on Fisk? Because you don't have a one technique. Mm -mm. But is that going to keep you from drafting a center who could, as you would like to say, this guy's going to be with us for 12 years, Yeah. potentially, yeah. you know, 13 years. So that's that's the discussion. To me, it's if it was a one technique and it was sweat or fisk, now we're having a little bit more of a discussion here. Okay, so I know you love Peyton Wilson. A lot. Frazier, a lot. Frazier or Peyton Wilson. All right, you're going to force me to do this, aren't you? That's where I get tough, man. Because, look, I was thinking about it, Brian. Like, man, just imagine your offensive line. Okay, you, am I you, stack? Go ahead. Please. Yeah, am I stack? No, no, go, please. Finish yours. Finish your thought, please. You you, you have done all of the dirty work. All right, your offensive line is set. You can be cute the rest of your life. You can be cute for the next 10 years or the, or the rest of your coaching tenure here. You have a left tackle, a premium left tackle, left guard, center. Zach won't yeah. be here forever. And, you know, Terrence is there. Like, I think that's setting yourself up for the future. But Peyton Wilson is there, Brian. What do you do? See, this is the, this is the thing. Because to me, I have Peyton Wilson as the 24th best player on my board. Mm-hmm. I have Zach Frazier's the 34th best player on my board. Mm. So according to my stack, I would take I would take Wilson over. Now, that's my stack. If the group the, the group could very well this the group could have flipped this thing. The group could have said Frazier's the 24th best player on the board. And see, I know that's hard for people to kind of understand. It's like, damn, that's high, Brian. 24. Mm. Well, that's a second round grade, because I only have 22. Only have first twenty two round first round grades, mm -hmm. and that's the way a lot of teams are. Teams don't have thirty two first round grades. Right. It's somewhere between eighteen and twenty four is usually where that number falls. Mm -hmm. Some sometimes it's lower. Last year was a lot lower. So when you say, "Okay, he's my twenty fourth best player," you're talking on my board as a second round player. But the way that I have it right now, I would take on my board. I would take Wilson over Frazier. And I love Frazier though too, mm -hmm. I do. But the and and I would have to be in that room. I would have it, in the room. It's a consensus. I would probably be defeated in that room. Is what I you know my personal thoughts. I would likely be defeated in that room because to your point, the offensive lineman is going to be more valuable than the linebacker. Mm -hmm. Boy, tough stuff, man. Tough stuff. How would you rate that? You take you, you would by the way this discussion is going. I believe you would take Frazier. I would go Frazier. Do, do, do you have somebody? Do you have somebody? Do you have somebody like that? Do you have a player at fifty six that you really, really, really like? That if that guy is there anybody in that? I, I know you've been doing a, a lot of work on those wide receivers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly is where there I a go. Wide receiver? Is there a wide receiver that would flip you into not taking? Wilson. I love and, I love Frazier, Frazier Frazier at 50, Frazier. 56, yeah. I love Corley to pieces and I think he can he can change your offense right now. I yeah. love Malachi Coral to pieces, and he can change your offense right now. You don't have to teach him a whole bunch of weird stuff. He's one of those get him the ball now and and let him work, guys. And I think that's that's really what this offense is like like needed. Um, Green Bay playoff game. What this offense right. needed was some kind of spark from right. anybody. That dude is a spark. You know what I mean? And and he don't have to get open. Like you know, he doesn't have to fight. He's he's fighting through Jair Alexander. He's running right. over somebody. Somebody. I think I. I think Coyle can help you right now, but Brian, to me being phony, I have to ask myself, 
I think Corley is a is a is a is a cute pick right there. I think he can help you, but it's cute. I think in the long run, what a what a double down at left tackle and center, assuming those dudes work out for you, and that my evaluation is is on track, that you can find a Corley the next two or three years, Brian. Because if there's anything we know, it's hard to find centers and it's hard to find tackles. That's the one thing we've been saying. Centers and tackles, this class is special because it got a gang of centers and tackles. I think we'd be foolish to walk away from this class to think, oh, a, a premium left tackle will fall to us next year. A premium center will be here for us next year because it ain't been happening. We just we just came off a fourth-round center, undrafted center, Joe Looney at center. Man, Brian, I'm taking Zach Frazier. And if he's there, I don't I don't think there's there's any way I can move off of that. I'm taking him and I'm taking Mims or Jordan Morgan, whoever my left tackle is. I'm taking those dudes and I want to be a stud at offensive line. Detroit Lions, you want to know how they can draft linebacker early and draft running back at 12 overall and draft tight end early? Because they did the work on the offensive line. They've drafted their off and they ain't never got to worry about it. They got five or six more years. Like there's an old dude in um, Decker. Decker's the older dude. Maybe when he leaves, you probably got to fix him up. But for the most part, that line set, Brian Broaddus. I want an offensive line like that. Yeah, I your your point is is well made there. The thing, uh, if I could circle back on Corley too, I know yes. Dallas brought him in. Mm-hmm. Um, if you remember, and I tweeted about this because I, I think I tweeted about this morning. Uh, Corley got COVID before he went to the combine. He's taken a lot of thirty visits, mm-hmm. and so I think teams are getting the medical information. I was told in the league, I was like. Corley going a lot of places and this guy said, yeah, but Corley didn't do anything at the combine. Mm. So teams are now getting the medical information on him. So we'll see if it's a, we really, really like you guy, or we just trying to, we need the met or we need the medical information on you to make sure that our, our room is complete. And so just kind of keep that in mind when, and Corley is a hell of a player. If Dallas were to take Corley, I'd be super happy, but I also, I'm kind of hearing that Corley is going around and visiting teams to get the medical stuff done that he missed at the combine because of the COVID. Well, let's get him in the fifth then, Brian. You know me. <laughs> you <laughs> no, know I mean, I, he, you know, if you take him at 56, I wouldn't have a problem with that at all. Yeah. But I do, I do like the fact that your, your discussion that you're having about the offensive line, and, and that's the consistent thing about the Dallas Cowboys is, they draft these offensive linemen, they're plug-and-play guys, especially in that first round. We say it so much, but if there's something you can hang your hat on, it's that. That is something they have a real feel for. Mm-hmm. And that would be a, that would be something I think that, to your point, would be I think that would be welcoming for a lot of Cowboy fans who want them to run the ball again and want them to be able to protect their quarterback. Brian, I'm in charge of the draft. For the Dallas Cowboys. All right. I just doubled down at the offensive line and everybody looking at me like, damn, dog, what are we about to do at running back? I yeah. say, man, we're fine at running back. Give me Rico Dowdle and Hunter Lipke and Deuce Vaughn, and I'll take Jace McClellan and Eli, uh, what's his name? I'll be fine with those guys. Brian, uh-huh. do I get fired for my running back negligence, or will we be fine not taking running back early and just running with Eli and Jason? Man, I, 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 I cannot stand your disrespect for running backs right now. <sighs> I just, you know, I, I, I watch this, and you know, Malik Davis and all, and mm-hmm. you know, I, I watch him, and you know, I, I'm just, but I see depth. You know, I, man, the the kid Lloyd, I, I just keep. I love him. If I can't have Benson, if I can't have you know Brooks, if I can't have there's there's guys in this thing. I mean, my my guy at my guy at Tennessee, you yeah. know, uh, is I, I'm looking at Wright and Lloyd from USC, and they brought in Allen, you know, from Wisconsin. I could probably do without. Irvin, I watched him miss a blitz pickup the other day when I was watching Washington play yep. them yeah, in Oregon. But there's, you know, the names, I mean, the Ray Davises, the Corums, the Estimes. I mean, there's there's a good group of guys. So to me, I think it would be negligence on your part not to try and upgrade. I I think the Deuce Vaughn story is great. His 
dad, Chris, is a damn good scout and has been for a long time. I don't know what I can do with him. I don't. I don't know what I – I don't. I just – I didn't see it. I kind of felt like that they would come up with some things. And then it always reminded me what Bill Parcells told me. It's like, okay, you want to put that guy, you want to bring that guy to the game, how many plays is he going to give me? Yeah. If I make him active every week, how many plays is he going to give me? And they couldn't get plays. They couldn't even make plays. He couldn't play special teams. They've, they're going to have to do something different here. And, and I think it just it, maybe at one spot. And, but they're also, looking back at it, it might cost you your center that you want. So that's, that's what we do. That's where I think yeah. that you have a fundamental problem right now. Mm -hmm. I think I'm, and I'm saying you sure. have a fundamental problem and your fundamental problem is not wrong mm -hmm. because if you're one of those guys or gals that believes that we could get running backs later in this draft, you probably could, but if it's going to cost me my center to draft Brooks or Benson or one of those guys, I'm, probably not going to be too happy with the team right now if they do that i'm not one of these people that just openly disrespect running back right because some people think that oh i think you do but don't, no. don't worry about that yeah i'll tell you why right because everybody thinks that just because the running back is a running back that they can be good but for every yeah. you know every great seventh round running back that wins Super Bowl with the chiefs there's 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 15 mike webbers is what i always say brian brothers yeah. so oh, yeah but this is my thing though and just this draft in particular we don't have a fourth and it's a long time from pick 87 to pick 174 that's a long time brothers so what i'm saying is we really got to make this money at pick 56 or pick 87, right? Yeah. By the time we get to the fifth round, the sixth round, and the and the two seventh round picks, that's gonna be your running back range. Like what guy, like it, so if you if you feel like we can get Marshawn Lloyd at pick 174, I think he'll be mm. gone, brother. Because I love- Oh no, he's, he's yeah, he'll be he's gone. gone. Bucky Irvin's gonna be gone. Uh, uh, Your Wisconsin guy, they're gonna be gone. And you, don't Allen, like, yeah. Yeah, and you don't like your Notre Dame guy. So what I'm saying is, you was just one smiling character when we just got this left tackle in this center. So now we had pick 87. Let's do it, Brian Brothers. We had pick 87. Is that where your running back's at? Or are you going to miss that linebacker? Are we going to miss that one tech because we need one really bad? Yeah. Wide yeah. receiver? Are you just going to trust Jalen Tolbert? That's where we at, Brian Brothers. That's what the Joneses have given. We the scouts. All we can do is just pick the dudes and tell them what to do here. I don't want to neglect running back. It's just that I, I I feel me personally I can make magic with twenty four fifty six and eighty seven right here. Yeah, I, I you know what? No, we we had this problem yesterday on the draft show. Uh, we we were we got in a situation where we were actually able to trade back, and we did the mock draft, and we had to make a determination of and for the exercise in the room, uh, we traded back, but we. We picked up an extra pick from Kansas City, picked up a third round pick. And the determination that we made, we took the running back, we took Benson in the third mm -hmm. with our 87. But with that extra pick, we took a defensive tackle. Mm -hmm. We took our kid from Texas AM. Mm -hmm. Uh the and Jackson. So Jackson. Yeah. So what happened there though is for the exercise, it's like we didn't have a center. And we knew that we were going to sit out the fourth round. And you're right. It was a – well, in real time, it was not long because we hit the button and it just drafted. But you kind of understand what's about to happen. Yeah. Well, Norzad, the center from Penn State, was there. We, we wa I wanted to see if we passed on the center with the extra pick, were we going to be able to get one? And – in this draft, it did work out. It worked out that way. But that's something you have to think about mm -hmm. is there's people that will not – they'll say this running back is not that important. It, taking a center is more important. Taking a linebacker is more important. Taking a one-technique defensive tackle is more important. And I, I don't think they're wrong. Yeah, I don't think they're wrong. But I've also seen this team not run the ball very well. Yep. And maybe a lot of it has to do with – my personal opinion, I don't think the offensive line was particularly good. Uh, I don't think that they were particularly good at point of attack blocking tight end either. So there's a lot of factors that went into that.
I had a conversation with Duke Mannyweather, right? And every question I asked him about, you know, whoever I asked him about, right? He was so enthusiastic. Oh man, Mims is a special player. Never seen yeah. nothing like him. I say, okay, well, what about Fra- oh Frazier's tough, man? He's mm. strong as hell, man. Great movement, da da da. I asked him about Mason McCormick. Oh, Mason McCormick. Oh man, hey, yo, don't let the small school stuff fool you, man. He's t- tough, strong. I, I, so, uh, Duke, you uh, you've been working with uh Brock Hoffman. What you uh think about him? Hey, man, the kid works hard. You know, we we taking it one day at a time. We just yeah. trying to put one foot in front of the other, you mm-hmm. know. I'm not putting words in Duke's mouth, right? That is a you read between the lines is what you're doing. That is a serious stoic dude. I wouldn't dare yeah. put words oh, in no. his mouth. He didn't jack around. I no. wouldn't dare put words in him. But how it sounded, Brian, is he's very enthused about some of these prospects. When I asked about Brock Hoffman, hey man, he working hard. He's doing his best. He's putting one foot. Hey, that dude is motivated. What that sounds like to me is we shouldn't put a whole bunch of stock or a whole bunch of blind faith into, okay, yo, we love Brock Hoffman. Cowboys love him. Cool. Put him at center one and let's, and let's go play some games. I, that's what I took from it. So if anything, talking to Duke that day, shameless plug, y'all go watch talking to Duke that put more urgency in me. Like, Hey, we got to have a center. We must have a center. How about this, Brian Bros? Could you live in a world? You have a center. You got, let's just say you got Graham Barton playing center for you, right? Or Jackson Powers, whichever one you like the most, right? But we have to play Richards at left tackle. Awesome Richards at left tackle. Could you live in a world where we do that? Every other offensive line in the league got a great run scheme with terrible offensive linemen on it. Why we got to have five yeah. top-tier offensive linemen? Do you think Austin Richards can, can play 17 games for you? When he came out of North Carolina, I talked to Will McClay on the phone about this. And I... I personally liked the awesome Richards pick at the time. Mm-hmm. I I was happy from the standpoint that I'd seen him block guys at Clemson. I'd seen him block guys at Notre, Notre Dame. Dame. I've seen him block guys north. You know, uh, you know when uh, various uh, North Carolina State, Miami, I've seen him block Florida State, Miami. Yep. I've seen him block guys. What always bothered me is when you took a guy say from and this this is probably a slam at Marshall. This is probably a slam at directional state school, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You know, it's a little different block in Florida State and Miami and Notre Dame and Clemson than it is blocking Morgan some of state. these other schools. Yeah, Holy Cross. Other, yeah. 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 It's a little different. And I Will's like, yeah, I just got to get him a little stronger. I get, you know, and, and you've heard me on this platform before say, hey, when every time I have to hear guy needs to get a little stronger, I say that, he ends up being a guy who plays for 10, 12 years. Because he gets a little stronger. So I wish, Bosh, I wish that I could have seen Awesome Richards play games last year when he when it when they needed him to play. I wish I I I know what a doga is. You know, and they got punished in the Miami game because of that. You know, and I I feel like that to me that might have been a little bit of a wasted opportunity. My I don't know. I don't know if Austin Richards is it. My 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 hope is that that I hope is that the second year there is that jump. But we've also been, I mean, Damone Clark. I was hoping for a jump there. I was hoping for you know, there's these guys that you're hoping for jumps. I don't know about Austin Richards. I do know though, if you take one of these tackles, you know, you take one of these tackles at 24, they're gonna be better than Austin Richards. One hundred percent. One yeah. one one hundred percent. Any anybody you'll you'll take in the first round. But let me ask you this: Is Awesome Richards twenty twenty two film? Is it better than Dominic Puny's from Kansas? Yeah, and I think Puny is a to me he's a guard. Yeah, than a tackle. Uh, I the, the thing that I I had I had a third round grade. I had a third round grade on Awesome Richards. So now what I'm doing is I'm trying to compare him to Rosengarden from. Washington yeah. or Fisher uh, from Notre Dame mm-hmm. or Foster from Missouri or our kid from Yale. Yeah. You know, I'm those, that's where I'm trying to kind of compare. I, I would rather have had awesome Richards than say Wallace from Penn state or Christian Jones from Texas. Mm-hmm. You know, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Mm-hmm. So um, if, if it's, if you don't, take an offensive tackle in the first round 
and you get down to pick 87 and one of those guys are on the board, I think that Rosengarden from Washington would be a guy that I think I could work with. Mm. You know, I mean, the athletic ability, uh, the the ability to – I like how he varies his blocks, his sets, you know, plays with the defender a little bit that way. Short sets you, set deep, set wide. I That's where I would start to compare guys. But, you know, when you start to talk about Morgan and Mims and our oh, BYU no. kid, you know, all the, those guys are all better. But now the comparison is about, okay, where is he with in my on my board? Rosengard, Fisher, Foster, those guys. Brian, I am tired of being a coward. <laughs> I'm sick of hiding in the shadows. Welcome to welcome to the draft. I got there, I, there's there's guys in the league. There are yeah. guys in the league that really work for teams that are cowards. Yeah. And and I'm gonna get in trouble for saying that, but That's and I know cool. most of them. I mean, I know a lot of the general manager guys. Yeah. Um, I haven't been a coward for the for the most part of my life, but working with Brian Broaddus can make you a coward sometimes. But Brian, yeah. I didn't make my I didn't make this thing, this YouTube thing, being a coward. So I'm gonna stop being one right now, Brian. Okay. I like Blake Fisher from Notre Dame and mm-hmm. Christian Jones from Texas mm-hmm. better than Tyler Guyton. I like those guys more than I like Tyler Guyton. Tyler Guyton has a ton of upside, yeah. plenty of it. He's a great moving athlete. He gets to his landmark expeditiously, cuts his defender in half. Boom. Fantastic looking, fantastic moving athlete. Yeah. But Brian, he's incredibly rough around the edges. I don't think he knows what he's doing with his hands. He does a lot of chest bumping. He does a lot of chicken winging. And for anybody in the chat that never played offensive line, chicken winging is a real technique. It's in a book. Mm -hmm. He, He does a lot of catching. Sometimes when he's past setting, his palms are up, and that means hands end up on on backs, Brian Broaddus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sometimes when he's reach blocking or he's blocking to the second level, he gets there, but he doesn't always get his head across. Mm-hmm. And I think Tyler Guyton has played enough reps. I think he's had enough experience in college football playing that position to where some of these small techniques that many kids learn in high school, I think he should have that down already. So his rough around the edges, lack of experience bothers me a little bit. I don't get those same issues from Christian Jones and Blake Fisher. Guyton may be more gifted than them, but they have a higher ranked black belt than Tyler Guyton does. So I'm Stop! I'm, I'm going to stop being a coward today, and I'm going to say that Christian Jones from Texas and Blake Fish from Notre Dame are ranked higher on my board than Tyler Guyton. Am I fired? No. Um, I think there's some legitimate concerns about Guyton. I think for as tall as he is, he doesn't always bend his knees. Correct. I think that's something that you could see. Uh, I like what you're talking about with the hands. I do feel like that he is a nimble-footed guy with the movement. I do agree with you about the search and maybe staying connected with his guys. Mm -hmm. The thing about Fisher, he has been a right tackle his whole career at Notre Dame, played in a ton of games. Uh, I think he's laid off the ball at times. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's because, uh, you you know, and and that happens even at Notre Dame Stadium. That's not – like we're on the road at Chapel Hill or, you know, at the the old carrier dome in Syracuse where, you know, we're laid off the ball a lot of places. Uh, I worry about that a little bit with him. I worry about him finishing at times. I think there's some one shot to his game hit and then kind of fall off and do that. Uh, You know, it's, the things I think there's far less warts on Guyton mm. than there are on the other two players, just technique wise. Mm. But they're warts; they all have them. Yeah. Uh, so if you were to say that, you know, and I, I'm listen. I'm I've always said this too about people that do this, you know, either media scouts or scouts. If you're looking at the tape and that's what you see, I can't can't go after you on that. I, I know what I point out, and but you've made some really good points about that. I don't think I could take, I don't think I could take Fisher and the others over Guyton. Mm-hmm. Just I think the things with Guyton to me are a little less 
problematic than what I saw with the other guys. I just don't see Guyton finishing a whole bunch. I just so look one one thing I really like. Two things I like about my offensive line. Fisher, is, I mean Fisher. The same thing. You can watch some games with Fisher too, so, like to watch the Ohio State game and stuff like that. I mean yeah. that's those are pro players. Yeah. I mean he's playing against some pro players there, but um, that, that's it's it's a good it's a valid point. It's just to me, I just I see far less warts with Guyton than I do with the other players. My whole thing is I don't see a whole bunch of control from Guyton. I see a bunch of erratic behavior. I see a bunch of, you know, flopping around. But that 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 could just be my eyes, Brian. I, I could be wrong. But no. if if one dude we're talking about taking at 24 and another dude we're talking about taking at 87, I would rather the dude at 87 that I like a little bit more than the mm-hmm. projected athlete that could be this taken at 24 yeah. i want to be 100 percent right about the guy we take at at um at uh first round 24 yeah the, the thing about you know you you mentioned also christian jones yes. as well that's a four-year starter mm-hmm. you know that's a lot like our guy at notre dame i mean that that a lot of starts there and with him though it's i don't think he's the best athlete i think the other two guys are better athletes than him yeah they are I think he's going to be – he's more of a fighter, more than a smooth, fluid player. He battles his way through blocks. I think the thing I worry about Christian Jones is the redirect. And this is when he misses like with his hands and his head will go down and then his hands are bad. Mm-hmm. I didn't always see him redirect back yeah. to his guy. And then you don't see him set deep enough at times too was another issue that I had with him. So – it's all about the, the, like I said, the warts. Mm-hmm. Who is, you know, who is the guy that has the least things that you have to worry about? And there, you know, there, there's a lot of these guys that are getting pumped up on the board. Like I said, our our kid Paul at Houston, we we've yeah. been really consistent about that. If you ask me, who are the players I have a really big chance of being wrong about? Dallas Turner at Alabama, the edge, and Paul, the offensive tackle from Houston. Those are my guys that I could be really wrong about because I don't see it. I don't see it. If you if you came on here and said, oh, well, hey, I, I think Paul is better than Guyton, now I'm going to have a little yeah. bit of a problem with what you're doing. Yeah, now we got to talk. <laughs> now we got to talk. talk. What now film you talk. was looking at? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Can you tell me the games? Yeah. That's yeah. the first thing I would say. Yeah. Like, what games do I need to watch? Yeah. You know, and then if, you you know, that's, that's usually how that, that kind of works out. Brian. I know you just fired me for my offensive line stuff, but I'm sick of being a coward, Brian. I'm tired oh, of this. I'm tired of this. I'm, 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 I'm about to tell the whole world. And I'm only saying this because I'm putting together my rankings and stuff, right? Yeah. Jared Verse, Liatu Latu, yeah. Darius Robinson, Chris Braswell. I have all, all those. Better, yeah. All better than who? All, all better, better than, than Dallas Turner. I have all those guys ranked higher than Dallas Turner. Verse, Latu, Robinson, Braswell. I have all those dudes ranked higher than than Dallas Turner. Man, that that I just I just spilled my guts. I've got I uh I'm a coward. I'm a coward for my opinion on Turner mm. at Alabama. Yeah. Cause you do see first round traits. Sure. But you also see Braswell on the other side getting more pressures Mm -hmm. and you worry is you're like, man, can they coach this guy? And Alabama is well coached. They're damn in the playoffs every year. Mm -hmm. Nick Saban, that staff, they're well coached. I worry about Turner. I think that, I think one of the most underrated players in this draft is verse from Florida state. Yeah. I, I, there's, I, you watch him play where he came from to how he's playing now. Oh, but the Turner scares the hell out of me. Yeah. And Braswell, I think, is getting underrated as well. Uh, man, it, it's the uh, it's tough. That's a that's a tough position because to me, I'm always looking for the guys that are the complete players. Yeah. And I don't know if Dallas Turner is a complete player. And there's I'm, I, I see the flashes, and maybe I'm grading the flashes of Dallas Turner, mm-hmm. and that's affecting how. I, I, but everybody's got this guy as a top eight player. That's high for me. That's high. I don't that's do high. well. I don't do well with the super athlete 
not yeah. but I don't have traits, you know what I mean? Just the run down right. the middle of you guy. Like right. uh Dallas Turner and um Robinson from um Penn State. They 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 they're the same kind of dude to me, right? The 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 super athlete, but I can't finish. The super athlete, but I don't know what to do if somebody grabs me. The super athlete, but I don't have a counter move, right? Michael Parsons makes it, you know, to where guys like that, like, oh, I can do it. Yeah, yeah. Michael Parsons walked in not knowing how to how to pass rush, but he's he's more athletic than everybody. But every single year, there's an edge dude that's more athletic than everybody. That when the tackles get athletic, which is the league. They get got because they don't have counter moves. They don't. They don't have setups. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. And and Dallas Turner and Todd Robinson don't have setups. So I'm gonna opt to go with the with the edge dudes that are more technical, that are more powerful, that at least have backup plans and counters. The thing that scares me, Vosh, about Law Two, and it goes back to where you and I opened our show today. The medical, sure. The medical's scary, yeah. and. Am I getting a guy that is going to be – this could be like our guy Phillips, the transfer, remember, from went from UCLA to Miami. with Jalen Phillips. Jalen Phillips, Phillips. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This could be the exact same thing, uh, that type of player. Yeah. And he, he scares me because of the medical stuff. I love the player. But if you gave me a choice of all those guys, give me verse all day. I, I, I know – what verse is going to be. I don't know what those others are going to be. And that's a scary thing when you're picking sure. players up that high. Yeah. Brian Bronson and everybody else in the room, all the other scouts, I, I bet not hear not one of y'all tell me nothing about drafting Troy Franklin in the first or mm-hmm. the second round. Troy mm-hmm. Franklin is a third round grade for me, and I feel better if I got him in the fourth. <laughs> Am I fired? You're fine. No, you're not fired. I you you would have a you would have a, a crusty old scout going with you on this one. Uh I uh you become my new uh wide receiver whisperer. I used to be Jeff Cavanaugh was mm. my wide receiver whisperer, but yeah, you could you could talk me into some of these wide receivers. Uh There's plenty of them. I think that to me, I if if I'm wrong about Franklin, I'll accept it. Yeah. We're going to be wrong about a lot of these players, likely. Mm-hmm. But we're probably going to be right about some guys, too. Yeah. That's the beauty of the draft. I know a lot of people are have got him shoved way up the board. I don't see it myself. But, you know. But I will say this, though. I, I've heard whispers. Uh, you know, Wiggins has that the Clemson corner. Mm-hmm. They 173 pounds, whatever. 178 pounds, whatever he is. I'm hearing that that the Cowboys were okay with the frames of Franklin and then also Wiggins, mm. the frames being the lighter guys. Smart. So, you know, if you did, if you said, Oh, well they won't take them because they're slightly built players and all that. I, I, I don't think that's the truth. I think they're, they're going to give those players their due. So that means they but, just, they just value the length over the the size or whatever. Yeah. yeah that's exactly what it is. Okay. Exactly what it is. Yeah. Um, which of these, which of these late linebackers would you want that can possibly come in and play some rotational linebacker, play a little bit of teams for you? Uh, whether it be Watson from Mississippi State, um, Muasu from UCLA, one of those guys. Which which of these late linebackers, considering we don't get one 24, 56, and 87, which of these guys can we get in the fifth round that we like? Fifth round, sixth round, or one of those one of those sevens? I uh man, that's that's a really good question. The guy that uh the guy that I really liked, and we talked about him yesterday. Uh, I've got Watson. I've got Watson in the third. Dallas is hunting linebackers. If you start to hear the whispers about the thirty visits that yeah. they took, it seems to me they 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 brought in like eight linebackers. Yeah, Wilson, Cooper, Colson, Wallace yeah. from Kentucky. I love Wallace from Kentucky. By sure the way. Was, yeah. You know, they got the Dallas Day options. You know, they could probably work some other guys as well. Ford, Hopper, you know, those guys. Uh, they're hunting linebackers. But if you said, if you said, hey, give me a linebacker that I can get maybe a little bit later. His size isn't particularly great. Jordan Morgan from Temple, mm. I like a lot. And Jordan McGee, Jordan McGee from Temple. Jordan McGee, I'm sorry, Jordan McGee, my bad. 
uh, I said, what did I say? Jordan Morgan. Morgan, yeah. Yeah, Jordan McGee from uh, from Temple. Mm-hmm. He's six one. He's two hundred twenty eight pounds. This guy was a safety uh, and a quarterback in high school, and he's playing as a linebacker. And everybody's going to go, "Well, damn, Brian, he's Marquise Bell is who he is." Um, well, this guy plays legitimate linebacker position, mm-hmm. and he does a really. I mean, he could cover some ground in the hurry when he moves. He's super quick. Uh, he really is good awareness. He's got instincts for the position. Uh, his footwork is really, really, really good. Uh, he's a twitchy player, and he's really good in pass coverage, especially in zone where he can read the quarterback and then go forward there. He's not afraid to come flying up when he sees screens and throw his body around and stuff. I only saw one time where uh, I watched a game where he missed in space. Yeah. You know, it's generally he's a pretty good tackler. So I think that when you have a guy that has a nose for the ball, has toughness and is smart. I I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a shot on that guy. So Jordan McGee would be one of those later linebackers. And this is a guy that they uh that they're they're they've talked to. So I would keep an eye on that. I'm just I'm just convinced that whenever draft comes around, there's gonna be one position we're gonna go, damn, we didn't touch this at all. <laughs> like now what? You know, I don't, I don't know which one it's gonna be, but it's gonna be one of them. Safety, I believe. Yeah. You talking about for the Cowboys? Yeah, Cowboys. Yeah, safety. Yeah, say so it's uh, there. There, you know, and there, and there's there's a pretty good group of safeties. I don't know if they're going to address it or not. Sure, I mm-hmm. don't know, but I, I kind of feel like there's some there's a lot more Vosh's. I know I'm I'm down to the last two three guys, mm-hmm. and it's all kind of safety guys. I'm looking at at the end. I've got a lot more strong safeties on my board than I do free. And that's that's typically how it goes. Yeah, oh, I haven't man, watched I'm, one safety yet. Yeah. Still, <laughs> still, I'm gonna watch them this week. I'm gonna watch them this week. I'm gonna watch 108 wide receivers and no safeties. <laughs> I go, I just go down a position or whatever. So now I'm at safeties. I'm not watching quarterback. I just, I, I refuse to watch quarterback. So yeah, I'll watch about five or six safeties, you know and that'll be what you, I do for the year. Go ahead. Would you? Would you? You need to watch. Uh, you need to watch. If you're gonna watch quarterbacks, mm-hmm. watch Pratt from Tulane. Tulane, yeah, just to have an idea about him. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I know in our mock draft that we did yesterday, we took Sam Hartman. We had this last seventh round pick. Yeah. We took Sam Hartman, the quarterback from Notre Dame yeah. with our last pick because mm-hmm. we're throwing a dart. And, uh, I don't know when I watched Wake Forest football, sure. like we were watching receivers at Wake Forest last year. Hartman was throwing, I mean, damn, throwing the ball, throwing the ball, throwing the ball. And he goes to Notre Dame and it's, he goes from being one of the top quarterbacks in the country to being yeah. a guy that we're picking in a mock draft in the seventh round. Yeah. And I'm like, how does that happen? But he, he's a better player than that. And we, that was, that's unfair. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Please hold this tape, hold yeah. this moment, uh, you know, on April 12th. Yeah. If Sam Hartman turns into Brock Purdy, Remember where you heard it first <laughs> on this show. Oh, you know we're going to tweet the hell out of that one. Oh, right, damn right we are. Up. Yeah. Uh, Kendrick Lamar or Drake? Who's going to win that battle? <laughs> Man. Uh, you don't know. Who's you... got – yeah, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> not enough film? No, not enough. Yeah. Plenty of film. One guy seems to always be – isn't Drake our bad luck guy? If Drake shows up at your, on your team sidelines, isn't something bad about to happen to your team? Drake is the bad luck I can't guy. Have, I can't have a bad luck guy on my – so – Yeah. But Kendrick Lamar, who who's the guy – who's got the better – who's the guy that's got the – it seems like to me that Drake really wouldn't want to fight you. Sure. Sure, that's fair. I think he's more of a kind of okay. So Drake is from Canada, and Canada, he, yeah, and, he's got a great. I saw his home in yeah. up in Toronto. Yeah, it's beautiful. And he was on his Nickelodeon show when he was a kid. And Kendrick is from Compton, uh, California. Oh, so he's from the area. <laughs> he's a different the, upbringing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Drake's a big dude though, but I don't, I don't think that matters if somebody's really I, like you know. No. I don't think. so. But it's just rap music though. It's just, I mean, they're just they're just. Gonna I wonder. Be, okay, yeah. who who would who would honestly who. It, they would never fight, of course. Sure. Now, now you never know. Sidearms might appear. We've seen that before, and you know, we've seen that. 
Sure. It's uh it's it's kinda like the old Prince and Michael Jackson thing. Like one's a pop star yeah. and one's like a musician. You know what I mean? So, you know, Kendrick Kendrick would be your musician and Drake makes, you know, Zumba music sometimes, you know? He makes music that your son would listen to. So uh there's a lot of people looking at this battle that would think Kendrick's the guy, but I just want I just wanted to hear what, what you had to say because I didn't think that a a man like you would even know who Kendrick is, but you started pondering a little bit. So I don't Yeah. Know. Yeah, I uh who's my guy that's from North Carolina? As J. Cole. Uh, J. Cole, yeah, yeah. People Jay are Cole. people are sick of he J. Cole. He sings about the LA uh LA girls, right? One from my LA girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's him. That's his line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't want to use the word. I know I'm yeah. on a podcast. Here, sure, but, uh, sisters, yeah. But sure. it's a great line, you know, yeah. one time for my LA lady, hey. one time for my LA. Oh, uh, you know, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's a California Love is a great song. I listen to it. We go to training camp. Yeah. I like that those guys. Those guys are all my age, right? Or close to my age. They're my right? well. They're like my age. They're like high thirties or something like that. They're my. Oh, they're age, all high thirty yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Thought, I, wait a minute. Like all those guys that, that were with Dre and all those guys. Oh, all, oh, okay. Well, uh, okay. So Tupac is dead, but yeah, Dre. I know Tupac. Yeah, is, yeah, I knew yeah. Him, yeah. Doctor Dre and Snoop are your age. Yeah, for sure. They're your age. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's, yeah, yeah. Snoop, Snoop, and I share the same last name. Broadus, Broadus, yeah, yeah, Calvin Broadus. But, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. but he's only a 1D. I'm a 2D. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brian. That sounded awful the way I just said that. Pa- but, yeah. Man, pause. Uh, Brian, <laughs> Brian Broadus uh, talk, talks 30 seconds of hip-hop. Thank you very much, <laughs> sir, for coming Thank here. Thank you, man. And, and your infinite knowledge here. Catch him on G-Bag Nation 2-7. to seven. Catch him on the, the Dallas Cowboys. Man, we are 14, 13 and some change away from the NFL draft. And yeah. and y'all, please tune in to the draft show coverage. I know y'all are going to watch me. You're going to watch Brian. Flip back and forth, man. Just watch us both. Or just watch them and come watch me after. Whatever you want to do. Support both platforms, man, because we all put in a, a, a gang of work. And we're, we're, we're both covering three days of it, all right? So y'all be sure to tap in with us. And B-R-Y getting broadest on on Twitter. Appreciate you very much, sir. And we'll catch y'all next time. Salute.